Hey everybody, this is Perch, and every now and then the questions that come in are not long enough to do an entire, you know, topic. It would be a pretty short video, and and so I gather a couple of them up, and then we just do a batch of questions, and the, that they're, they're usually they're more funny, more reverent. I can give more of a silly answer instead of a, a detailed answer, but that's what uh, we're going to do right now. So we've got a bunch of questions, again, pretty small, fun. Let's see what we've got. So question number one. Uh, hey, Perch, what is Comicsgate adjacent mean? And are you Comicsgate adjacent? All right, easy question to answer. Adjacent, when somebody uses that term, what they mean by that is they would like to just call you the term, whatever it happens to be. They'd like to just call you that. Uh, but they don't feel like they have enough solid evidence to completely land that claim. So what they're going to do is they're going to throw the word adjacent on there, which allows them to be a lot more silly and fuzzy with uh, their argument. And in doing so, they don't really have to prove as much, and they can kind of just, you know, it's, it's fudging the numbers a little bit. So in this particular example, what they're wanting to say is, this person is a goofball, and they suck, and we hate them. But they're afraid that, you know, they can't really, you know, 100% land that claim or maybe the person they're talking about is well-respected or whatever it happens to be. So they're wanting to try and get as much of the, uh, the, the tar, as much of the stink on that person as possible without having to back up the full claim. That's what that means. In terms of me, I'm nothing adjacent. I am perch. <laughs> that's, that's all I am. On a regular basis, I piss off that group or I please that group. I, I And, you know, I'll be honest, half the time, I'm not even sure which way it's going to go. And bluntly, I don't lay awake at night wondering <laughs> which way it's going to go. I'm telling you from my view, let the chips fall where they may. That's what it is. Um, everybody wants to pigeonhole everyone else into one category or the other. And like, you're my friend or your enemy, you're nothing in between. I'm a, I'm a friend of facts and I'm a friend of my opinion. And if you line up with both of those, great. If you don't, no power to you, or you know, no, no power, no harm, no foul. I'll buy you a beer anyway. And if you really want to be pissed about that, please just go away. <laughs> the end. That's where that sits. All right. Next question. Hey, Perch, are comics ever going to reduce in price, i.e., get cheaper? Yes. Yes, I think they will. But and you're not going to like this. When they go digital, all <laughs> when they when they're, when they're all in on digital, it's going to get cheaper. Yes. Unfortunately, I don't think comics are going to get cheaper printed. Uh, yes, some paper is cheaper. There, there, there is this weird model, uh, by the way, that, that they're experimenting with in South America. And I know some of the viewers are coming from there. And I know Argentina is doing this. I know Brazil is doing this. I know, I know Mexico is not part of South America, but I know parts of Mexico are doing this. Where they're trying this new kind of uh, print on super cheap paper looks cheaper than old newsprint, cheaper than old comics. Uh, but they're basically printing on like, you know, almost toilet paper level quality paper. Um, but they're putting it out for, you know, basically no money. And they're using this shipment method where it goes into the cracks. And, and what I mean by that is they ship other goods and then they fill up the available space with magazines, news, um, and I think even local comics that are printed on this super cheap, cheap paper. And so what it does is it's uh, as silly as it sounds, it provides buffer in the box, but it's also just used to kind of distribute information. And there's no expectation of high cost or collectability or anything. It's got very disposable. And the cost, of the, like they're selling stuff for, you know, US dollar equivalent a quarter. It's an interesting model. I don't think that takes off in the US, but it's interesting. Imagine yeah, uh, this is like crazy, crazy disruptive idea. Imagine that uh, if if Amazon, rather than shipping their uh, products with you know plastic wrap, they shipped it with like five or six comics in there, just printed on garbage paper to kind of push it in the box. How weird would that be? It'd be super weird and and also kind of dumb. But yeah, anyway, I I love to see different people's experiments, even when they're stupid. Um, next question. Hey Perch, what about a comic book vending machine? Why couldn't you have comics 
in a vending machine, similar to the way newspapers used to be in a vending machine. Um, well, I, this idea comes up quite frequently. And the, the challenges are simply this. Uh, the, the vending machine is cost prohibitive to maintain and keep in good working order. And unfortunately, and this is like, why I can't use a newspaper vending machine? If you're really old, once upon a time, you could put like a quarter into a machine. It would open up the, like the front door and you'd take your newspaper and you'd shut the door. And it was built somewhat on the honor system where, you know, if you wanted to, you could, you know, grab a bunch of papers, you could pee in there, you could do all kinds of things, like throw your garbage in there, you could light it on fire. There's a lot of things you could do to just destroy the entire thing, but people didn't because they weren't dicks. And uh, that, that was a good system once upon the, you know, a time, but it wouldn't work today because people are dicks now. No, I, um, unfortunately you'd see, you know, the homeless using it as a toy, sorry, the unhoused using it as a toilet. You'd see, you know, the, if it's a newspaper example, they do a, a newspaper on Biden and somebody would spit on it, or they do a newspaper on Trump and somebody would pee on it. I mean, it's, just, it's like, unfortunately our society really doesn't allow for that anymore. The larger, uh, like a Coke dis machine, like a vending machine, um, you could do it, but again, too costly to maintain, too costly to get the comics in and out of it. Um, I know I heard that there was a comic shop that bought a vending machine and uh, basically took that vending machine, got a spot at like the grocery store, Safeway or something, put it in there, put the comics in there, and apparently it was a, it was a success. Um, I, I don't know. I, I mean... I think the only way forward, if you're thinking about the vending machine idea, is that is, is exactly that. Like a local comic shop buys a vending machine, negotiates with whoever, the local grocery store, Walmart, whatever it happens to be, gets that thing in the lobby, goes there once a day to restock and replenish and change out the comics, and it, it you know the business model works. Unfortunately, uh, the challenge, the other challenge you're going to have is the the comic book publishers, because they price this thing so expensive, you're pretty much credit card only. And one of the big advantages to a vending machine is it becomes a, a cash situation where you go in and you just, you know, you can put in a dollar and you can get something out of it. Um, if you if suddenly the comic book is like six ninety nine, then now you're in a credit card only situation that's going to start to knock out the kids who might be doing it as an impulse buy. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a decent idea, but it's got some, some hangups to make it work. Uh, the other factor is that space in a grocery store, convenience store, whatever it happens to be, uh, is valuable space. And so the, you know, the, whoever the, the grocery store is, whoever it might be, uh, they will, you know, they, they'd rather that spot go to Coinstar or, you know, one of these kinds of companies where they get a kickback um, and they, it's just more valuable to them. So that's, that's the other problem, but interesting idea. Sure. Next question. Hey, Perch, do you think we're ever going to get a swimsuit edition from Marvel or DC? No, no, I, no. Do I need to go any further? There's, that's not going to happen. <laughs> it's, it's not going to happen at all. Um, would I like to see it? I mean, I, no, not, I mean, I don't really care to be honest. Um, I mean, you think about the current artists at Marvel and DC doing a swimsuit edition. I, I don't know. I mean, nah, I, I, I don't know. Just, I'll just buy porn. I'm, I'm good. Um, <laughs> but those, those swimsuit editions in fairness, bring back some good memories. Cause they were funny, especially that first one. Cause man, that thing sold amazing for me. I must've moved. I want to say 300, 400 copies of that thing. People bought the crap out of that, that, that swimsuit edition. And, uh, and it was ludicrous. Like that was, that, I think that was the first one was the one that had the Punisher and he had like the Punisher skull just over his junk. And that was his swimsuit. And it was like, yeah, those, those were the good old days. Anyway. Um, uh, next question. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of, kind of related. Uh, anyway, uh, Hey Perch, do you think we're ever going to get back to the world where you had cheesecake tape type artists, uh, drawing the women like women and the men like men? It, um, that, that interesting. I, it, it, usually when people say drawing the women like women, they don't add the men like men. That's <laughs> equal, equal representation here. Um, you know, I, I mean, yes, you know, what's weird, weird is yes. I'm going to say yes. I do think we're going to see that again. And the reason I say that is, is comics and styles and everything else are very cyclical. 
And I don't believe we're on a one-way path to, to nowhere. I think that you do see things come and go in fashion, in, uh, in music, and everything else. And I think there will be a world where um, comic books do bring in more cheesecake uh, into the books. I think that will happen. Will it happen at Marvel or DC? Um, you know, Marvel, probably not. Uh, just in, that, in the fact that I don't think anybody at Disney has any appetite to have, you know, heavy cheesecake type books. I don't, I don't think they want that, that headache. Uh, I think at Disney, there's people who believe that, you know, if they put out a book with, you know, Rogue running around in the Savage Land in her torn up costume, that some mom will call him and say, how dare the company of Mickey Mouse do, do this? I, I, I think there's that thought process at Disney. I also think that there's enough people there who say, you know, we want, we don't want to be attached to things that are sexist, etc. So I, I just don't think it will happen. Um, you know, would I like to see it? Sure, I'd like to see everything, but, you know, no pun intended. But but I think DC, maybe a little bit more of a chance, but if it if it does fall under Discovery and Discovery keeps it, no. If it, um, I don't know, if it, if it migrates out to some other company where they're a little bit more attuned to that, I could see it happening. I could see a company buying DC and going, hey, you know, a way we could compete with Marvel is by going a little bit more old school, a little bit more violent, a little bit more you know sex appeal, etc. Um, I could see it happening. Again, it would take a new owner. It would take a, a different strategy, and you know, absolutely, people would line up against it. But um, it, it depends. Again, it depends on who buys this and and where it all goes. Odds are no for those for DC Marvel, but yeah, you know, outside chance of anything on the smaller indie scale, absolutely. It's only a matter of time before. Some company really uh, goes all in on that stuff. Uh, I mean, Dynamite has their covers, and God bless Nick for, for everything he does there. But it's, you know, the interior of the comics is not usually, um, you know, reflective of some of the stuff they put on the covers. Uh, but, but I think there's a, there's, there, there's a market opportunity there. Um, again, the, the, whoever does it, though, is going to have to weather the barrage of, you know, not my comics, uh, you know, stuff on Twitter that will invariably follow of people going, you know, sexist garbage, rah, 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 and, and everything else. Um, you're, you're definitely going to see that happen, but th those things are, it, it's Those are getting weaker, to be honest. I mean, the people are still doing it, but more and more companies are just like, I don't have to listen to you. And, <laughs> and they're just not. And I think that's, I think that's why you see people getting really feisty lately about this stuff. Why you see like the, the bizarre, you know, dumb reaction about Kickstarter using, you know, blockchain when Twitter uses it just as much and nobody complains. But I, I think it's, you know, I, more and more people are like, you know what, piss off. It's it. Guess what? Kickstarter still using blockchain, S still doing it. You know, comic companies are still giving Frank Miller work. Uh, he's got something coming out. I don't know if it's been announced yet, but he's he's got something coming. So, I mean, people complain and there, there has, there, there has been, and still will be some knee jerk reaction to, to this stuff and, and to, to cancel it or to, to close it down, but less and less, it just, uh, people are kind of, they're exhausted by it. I, I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, you went to the well too often. And at this point it's, you know, it just, nobody's really inspired to jump anymore. If you could show that you could make money doing something, people are just going to do it and they're not going to. They're not going to bother with any of this crap. So anyway, thank you for sitting through a number of short questions. I hope that was fun for you. And, you know, we'll get back to the longer ones soon. But otherwise, I hope you're doing well. Have a great whatever time of day this gets posted at morning, afternoon, night, whatever, wherever you happen to be. Thanks for listening.